Hello and welcome to another episode of Corgi Town USA. Uh, Corgi Town, where the corgis run the town. We apologize. Bear with us. Pardon our dust. We are having some landscaping work being done here at the Corgi Committee. So we have more borks than usual. Very true. <laughs> as, a, as well as some bumps and some scratches and some who knows what will happen today. But thanks for rolling with us. We have uh, some uh, WWF. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if I can say those letters. But we have some wrestling going on here. No, not not with some SmackDown. Uh, yes, yeah, some SmackDown. Not with The Rock. Corgi SmackDown. <laughs> unfortunately. Oh man, yes, Corgi SmackDown. Yeah. Well, we have. So I'm Candy, owner of Corgi Town USA. With me, it's I'm Catherine. I'm Cat, and uh, I am the uh, executive producer of the Corgi Town USA podcast. Yes. And in my lap is Chuckles, our spokes corg, tricolor corgi. We have our wrestling corgis, Mortimer and Digby, today, and they are. Knocking all kinds of things around. We may lose our camera or audio. We'll be right back if we do. Bear with us. But we also have Booger in studio as well as Hammer. So full house today. Full house. It's going to be pandemonium at its finest. That's right. Stay tuned. So for our guest today, uh, some of you audience may already be familiar with the Corgi Christmas Santa Exchange on Facebook. Right. It's never too early to start thinking about Christmas. Yeah. Well, and it's it's charitable as well. So right. a couple things that we love. Supporting animals uh, and helping with animal causes but and vet bills, but also Corgi Schwag. Corgi Schwag. Goodbye, Corgi Schwag. So we're going to bring on uh, a nice lady named Josie who started this. Should we bring her on? Absolutely. Okay. Hi, Josie. Let's get her in here. How, How are you, are you just... doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank Excellent. Now, yeah, thank you for spending time with us today. And we are going to share on the screen for anyone watching. It's Facebook and it's Corgi Secret, Secret Santa Gift Exchange. So if you're listening, you can go to Facebook. You can go to Corgi Secret Santa Gift Exchange. There you can find the swag. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about it and uh, exactly what we're talking about here. So we are here with Josie. Josie, will you please tell us how you got started with this? Yeah. Well, I'm one of those people who always try to figure out something new, try to think outside of the box, try to do something fun, but also raise some funds. So in 2013, I um, did an event. I'm also having a page where they're supporting Corkies, and I did that event on the page. And we had some people signing up, and it actually was uh, really cool the first year, more in success than I thought it would be. So um, the whole idea is that, you know, you buy something for your dogs to exchange, not just for the humans. And that's kind of why I thought, well, Let's do a little amount that you pay towards this, which will right. be a fundraiser for helping pay with fat bills. And um, the first two years was really events. It was not that uh, big, but then over the years it grew. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. A lot of work, a lot of fun. Yeah, but I, I like that. Have fun, raise funds. Yes. Right. That's a good little byline that's there. It one. is. <laughs> Well, how exciting. So, you, so you've been growing this. You started, you said, in 2013. Um, tell us about sign-up numbers and about your growth. Um, I didn't really uh, keep records the first two years. What I could find was that I probably had roughly around 50 um, uh, animals. I have to say animals because it's not only corkies that can sign up. Of course, it's the people that sign up. Uh, the second year, probably a little bit more. But then the year after, I really started to... Uh, hang on to the numbers to see where we would go. And yeah. it was always close or just over the 400 and a few wow. years was a little bit more. And that is, then of course are the animals that have been signed up. Uh, people can have like, um, you have five, you said it in your introduction. Um, I have four corkies running around here. So one person, but four corkies. Um, so that makes- <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's exponential growth. That is really exciting. Yeah. And I really hope that this year, because it's the 10th year, it's kind of special that maybe we can make it over 500. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. And that's 500 people that have signed up, each one of them having at least one pet. No, that's 500 animals signed up. 500 animals that sign up. So we roughly okay. have just over 200 probably and in, in people signing up. Okay. 
Yeah, my my cat would probably just go on my computer and sign up himself. <laughs> I want stuff. I want stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Don't leave me out. <laughs> she says, "Where's my podcast?" <laughs> More different animals, anyway. So, and you want to include everybody in your household, right? Okay. Well, we're Corgi Town, USA, but we're all honorary corgis. We love all the little fur children. That's right. Yeah. So that's i mean that's really exciting i love that you're that you're growing this and there are some costs to sign up right like what's the explain to us this process because what we want to do dear listener dear viewer is try to drive you to this page of if you are on facebook not everybody's on facebook and we realize that but if you're on facebook uh go to this page and sign up for your animals and uh we'll kind of gonna dive into exactly what that means so can you tell us uh tell us what the costs are let's start there yeah. Okay, so um, the costs are roughly like four or five dollars per uh, animal. So if, um, like in your household, you said you have five, in my have four. So if I would sign up all four, it will be twenty dollars. Or if I would do four dollars, it will be sixteen. Now um, we all know that not everybody has a lot of uh, financial means. So if you decide to sign up your household as a group. So it's just one pay, that's okay too, which means you enter it as one. And then I'll try to hook you up with somebody else who has a group two and enter as one. Because I know that not everybody has the financial means. Now the sign up costs, the four or five dollars, and uh, we kind of opted over the last years, um, is really going towards uh, paying for fat bills. And especially Bandits Band-Aid, a nonprofit organization and yep. then after we have everything said and done, uh, we'll send over the money to the uh, to the organization there so they can help pay for fed bills. And that's just the sign up costs. OK, so uh, what I'm understanding and listener viewer, we uh, Corgi Town USA, we actually do uh, send donations occasionally to Bandit's Band-Aid and actually anything that you purchase on our website, a portion goes to Bandit's Band-Aid. And for those who are not aware We've had Carol on the show before. We love their organization. They help uh, paw rent with their vet bills because we know it's been especially trying a couple of years for, well, everybody. Yes. And so th that's what they do. Any funds that go to that organization goes to help needy paw rents and their poor, sick or injured babies. So this is very important work they do. Mm -hmm. So what I'm understanding is the sign-up costs to join this uh, for uh, $5 per pet Am I understanding that correctly? All that money goes to bandits? That goes, uh, it's all fundraising money, yes. Um, what I said before, uh, supporting Corkies is a page I have, and some people reach out to me over the years. They have like very little cost, but just too much for them. Um, maybe teeth cleaning or even just regular fats that they're in a situation that they just cannot pay yet. So then I'm willing to take some uh, a little part of the funds from the uh, Corky Secret Santa gift exchange and pay the Fed direct. Never pay the people, always the Fed direct, always accountability. But yeah, the sign up cost is always dollars that are for fundraising. And lately it's almost 100% for Bandit's Band Aid. Oh, okay. That's wonderful. How wonderful. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's a small sign up cost. You, yeah. you pay to, you pay to participate in anything. You pay to participate in your office, right. whatever they do, that football pool thing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and you pay just as much at the pet store to go and buy a handful. I mean, I can't get out of any pet store without at least $30, $50 <laughs> for <laughs> treats or toys or. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So. We're used to spending that money in our pets. So you, this is a great cause. And can you tell us a little bit about, I know that this is, they're auction items, Eric, and we love Corgi swag. Can you give us some examples of things that are available there on the page? Um, the Supporting Corgi's page, um, I do run auctions there. I do that mainly for a bandit's bandaid. So people will <laughs> donate items. And then um, uh, whenever we uh, set it up, then uh, auction takes uh, something like four, five, six days. Um, mainly it's quirky items because that sells the best. Uh, we all know that everybody loves towels and mugs and socks and paperwork, you know, everything that has a quirky on it. And, uh, but that's, that's really <laughs> sideways. Yeah, right. That's really <laughs> something totally different than the quirky secret set that gift exchange. That is just really uh, for, well, it started out just for the Christmas, but um, 
Yeah. Actually, we also had some Christmas in July fundraisers, and some people sign up for that too. So I mean, it's Christmas every day of the year, right? That's right. I think I think we well, I think we need Christmas cookies every day of the year. But that's <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. Well, yeah, you may say that. My pants say another story. Yeah, right. And <laughs> maybe we don't need Christmas cookies every. <laughs> so, oh, Mortimer wants to be in your lap. I know. I know. <laughs> Well, so that if we go to explain us, okay, so we understand that this is, uh, we can go and we can sign up on the page. The funds go for fundraising and it supports bandits and sometimes you pay vets directly. This is wonderful right. news. How exactly does the secret, so if you look at the name of the group, it's the Secret Santa Gift Exchange. How? So how does it work? If okay. you're a benefactor, well, yeah. Um, you know, everybody runs things a little bit different. What I normally did is um, somewhere in August, September, I start putting things in the group. It's a group on uh, Facebook. And I will say, you know, if you PayPal me your entry fee, which is the four or five dollars, whatever we set for that year, then um, give me a good email. And then I email you a form that you have to fill out. And on the form, I need the basic information like your name, your address, information about your dogs. Um, if I open it up for other animals, information about the other animals, I always say generally for friends, because, you know, it can be a cat, can be a bird, even horses show up sometimes on the forms. And then, they need help um, too. <laughs> yes. So, and then, um, they have to email me back that form with all that information and I'll put it on a spreadsheet. And then somewhere by the time October comes around, I'm gonna start looking at what their wishes are. Maybe somebody wants to be signed up with somebody else. That is fine, we can do that. But the secret about it is that I try to match up with people that you're not really aware of. Maybe you never knew that they were on Facebook, maybe make new friends that way. That's kind of cool to do that. A lot of times I hear from Aww. people, oh, what is their Facebook? Uh, name so I can find them and, and friend them and things like that. So, and thank them. So the secret is, yes, is it secret, but maybe not that secret on the end. And then um, we try to encourage people to also take pictures on when they buy stuff, when they mail stuff, when they get stuff, because it's kind of cool to see all those pictures in the group. And then of course, everybody will see, oh, that was my exchange my recipients and then it's not that secret anymore but um another thing that happens too is you know it's set up for the animals and yes our base is the quirky owners but if you have another breed and you want to sign up that is fine too if you're a quirky owner with other animals and you want to sign up that is fine too and then over the years we noticed that a lot of people are also sending some gifts for the humans, for the you dad Aww. or the you mom. And that is very cool. Um, I have no problem with it. Besides that, I have to say, you know, keep in mind that not everybody has the financial means to do that extra because it's an extra. That's not oh, yeah. something that we require. We ask you to buy a gift for the other, uh, for a friend, quirky or something else. And that should be somewhere in the range from 10 to $20. Also keep in mind, um, items can be very heavy. So don't buy heavy things because you have to mail it. You have to pay for the mailing and that will add on to your cost because the people that are signing up, you pay for the gifts, you pay for mailing it out. Um, nowadays we have some organizations, I won't mention them because you don't wanna put it out there, but there are many other organizations that mail direct, which is fine too. But then sometimes it's hard to know where it's coming from because not all these organizations put in their names. Uh, right. Some do a little card like this is a gift for. So it, it's sometimes a little bit of a guesswork. So that keeps it secret, but sometimes also a little bit more challenging. So the overall cost besides the sign up and then your 10 to $20 gifts, um, maybe something for the human it can add up. So people need to be aware of that. So what I'm normally doing is um, way ahead of starting the new year for the Christmas, I put it in the group, like, you know, just a refreshment of the rules. Think about this, think about that. Um, one thing that we really encourage is mailing out sooner than later, because we all know December um, yes. mail takes forever. Sadly, nowadays we have to talk about porch pirates. <laughs> 
So you want to be ahead of that game and make sure that everything uh, is there before. And then the owners, it's up to them. If they want to unpack it right away, that's fine. But we don't put the pictures up till closer to Christmas. And okay, then, good to know. Uh, yeah, because it's a Christmas exchange. Or mm -hmm. if we run it in July, then we'll set a date that this is the date that we're going to be uh, allowing that you can put up pictures. Because J Christmas in July seems to be growing uh, quite a lot too. So people really enjoy the exchanges. Absolutely. Well, and one thing I, you know, we do these, I've done before been, what's the word I'm trying to say? I've participated before in fundraisers and things like that around the holidays. And one thing that does have tend to happen in around the holidays is people can get giving fatigue because there are so many charitable organizations and everybody needs uh, more money during the holidays. So you'll see quite a bit of drives for fundraisers. And so I think Christmas in July is a great way to offset that because you're less likely to have giving fatigue during the holidays. And then everyone else has their own additional costs during that time of year, which are less prevalent during that time. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a great idea. Is something that I kind of want to address for one second, because um, I did it for several years and I will, you know, it's, it's, a lot of checking and rechecking and making sure and sometimes people are really coming back on time with yes i got it yes i will mail it off yes it's mailed off this is the tracking number great but after a few years i was actually burned out so i put it out there in the group if anybody would be interested to help me and i'm so thankful that nicole engel stepped up and she did it for the last two years Yay! Yeah, we will do events, and she's. I think she's maybe gonna do the July Christmas one this year, so I'm very, very thankful. And then we'll have the Christmas one in December again, and we'll see what happens uh, uh, in the future. But I'm actually amazed when I realized last year. Oh my God, next year is the tenth year we're doing this. But wow. I do need to let you guys know that Nicole worked very hard over the last two years and she raised so many funds for Bandit's Mandate. And I'm so thankful for that. How wonderful. And I'm sure, uh, dear listener, dear viewer, if this is something that excites you, uh, we'll have all the contact information because you can get burned out when you're volunteering. You can get burned out when you have a paid job, but you certainly can get burned out when you're volunteering. So if this sounds like it's right up your alley, Josie would love to hear from you. Sure, yeah. Let us know, and we always can use more people, so absolutely. Well, and we're thankful for what Nicole's been doing and what you have been doing, and we we always need uh, caring people like you in the community yes. to do these types of things, so we're very excited for what you're doing and to have you here to tell us about how to help. So can you explain what your – and you, you – you kind of told us, you know, and you said, man, it's a lot of work. And now that I've heard you describe what all entails, my goodness, that is a lot, a lot of work. work. Yeah, yes. <laughs> we're, we're tired. We need a nap now. <laughs> but can you tell us what your biggest, some of your biggest challenges are with, with running this program? One of my, uh, well, two biggest challenges is that getting a response when you send out an email. You know, you send out an email with, okay, this is your recipient and we would like to hear back from you. We would like to get the tracking number so that we know it's been mailed out. Um, most people do, absolutely. But the one or two that don't really can make it very hard to uh, to follow them. Yeah. Um, we kind of allow last minute or after closing signups. I don't think I will do that anymore because if you're already late signing up, then you're probably late mailing out and it's, it's very hard. Um, it's really, you know, if you communicate back to us that you have mailed it out, that will be just terrific. Now, if something happens because we have a tracking number, it gets lost or if life happens and you cannot mail out, communicate it to us. And we'll have elves that will step in to make sure that no quirky or fur friend will miss out on a gift. Because we oh, all know wonderful. life can happen. The quirky elves. The quirky elves. <laughs> I, <laughs> can, I can see Digby in, in, a little, in a little elf costume. I'm yes. Get him one. Be one of the quirky elves Be with a little hat. We have a few people that are always stepping up when we re reach out to them and say, hey, you know, this person for whatever happened in life cannot send it out 
uh, can you help us please? And they said, How yeah, wonderful. Sure. give me the address. And then two days later, we have a tracking number and we know it's been taken care of. So wonderful. that is really, really great. But we try to avoid that. And uh, communication is everything. So if people let us know that they can or cannot do something, no questions asked, we'll take care of it. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Oh, Corgi elves. I can't get over the Corgi elves. <laughs> I'm going to be stuck on that. Well, as Corgi elves. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so as we're talking about this, so Corgi, uh, our Corgi committee here, of course, Digby's part of that. And Kat is, I guess we're co-mommies right. to Digby. And then, of course, I have the four, Chuckles, Mortimer, Booger, and Hammer. So we have five here between those two humans, and we have more Corgis than sense. <laughs> can you, uh, can you, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your Corgis, Josie? Um, well, if you know me from Facebook, and some people, uh, we are long friends. I started out with a page or actually a profile that was my corgi. That was Shorty. Uh, Sadly, Shorty. Shorty only made it to nine years. And Aww. cancer, like in so many other dogs, went real fast. But that's how most people know me. Um, we had Reba. That was a rescue. She was what they call a backyard breeder dog. And I took mm -hmm. her in and she came with a load of medical things. But we took care of her and she had many, many good years. And Reba was also a Bandit Spend uh, client for a little bit. I got also in a situation that life happens, lost my job, Aww. and Bandit Spend Aid helped me. And that's one of the reasons that I like to figure out things to do to help Bandit Spend Aid. Um, I got Emma. Emma had a tail. Uh, Emma's owner sadly uh, passed away, but she knew because of her health situation that that probably would happen. So we had made arrangements. She had put in her will that when she would pass away, I would get Emma. Emma was flown all the way from Mississippi here to Colorado. Then I had wow. her in uh, our Oregon and I ended back up in Colorado. So Emma with the tail was here. That's how I actually fell in love with tails. Emma still had a few good years, but Emma was already a little bit older. But I was very happy that I could give her a few more good years. Aww. And then I was like, well, I want to wait for a little bit. And then um, again, through Facebook, people say, hey, do you know in... Colorado Springs or is this dog and the owner can't take care of it anymore and so anyway that's how I got Sammy Sammy is a rehome quirky um, uh, very sad story the husband sadly passed away and the wife could not take care of him so I said okay so we drove out there we met him and Sammy came home with us Aww. now um, we live mm -hmm. I live here with uh, Michelle and Michelle had a puppy, uh, Fluffy, Teddy. So we have the Fluffy Teddy in our household, and that's Michelle's. And then um, I came across uh, Ginger, and Ginger is an older lady, and she has actually what they call uh, down pastures. So she doesn't really have risks, so she kind of walks on her elbows. Oh. And the owner could not take care of her anymore. It was an older lady. So she was up for um, rescue or rehome. Uh, through a rescue organization and they had a hard time to find somebody who kind of knew what to do and with Reba I had a lot of um, no knowledge about older corkies and medical situations so anyway long story short I drove to Texas and Reba I sorry Ginger came in my arms and she came home with me and she's Aww. living out her life here with me now because of Emma with the tail um I always had this I kind of a, a weak spot for a Pam with a tail so I put some feelers out last year and I said, you know, I really want to give myself a birthday present. So this year, I don't mind, I turned 60, so I gave myself a birthday present. And <laughs> in a few weeks, I have Kaylee. And Kaylee is now 11 years and Kaylee is a Pam with a tail. So that makes Aww. Teddy the Fluffy, Sammy is a Tam. And then we have Ginger, she's a Tri. And then we have Kaylee and she's now a little puppy. So, and so I can afford to sign up for the Quirky Secret Santa gift exchange. <laughs> How wonderful. Fill in those slots. Fill in those slots. <laughs> and I love that you're right with about the Pembrokes with the tails. They're really fluffy. They're like squirrel tails. I know. They're so cool. And, well, that's a totally different situation talking about tails. So I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> But, uh, we could talk about corgi tails all day. We, <laughs> I was visiting a friend last night. She also has corgi. She's a corgi mix and then two other corgis. And she, <laughs> I was telling her last night as we're visiting, hers were running around and 
playing with a toy and she had this coffee table there. And I, and I told her, I said, how do people that have corgis with tails manage? Because I've thought about that. Like, it seems like everything would be knocked off the cor the no. coffee table. And the if you remember my honorary corgi, Wigan, the uh, Australian cattle dog, also known as a blue healer, has a very big fluffy tail. And he is... Um, he is happy to shake that tail around for you and let you know that, you know, he's, and he doesn't knock anything over, really. I just feel like it would be pandemonium, although I have four here. Yeah, that <laughs> would be pandemonium. There's never an issue with Emma. The only thing that happened when we had Emma, and she was, of course, an older lady, and then we got Teddy the puppy. So Teddy the puppy loved to hang on Emma's tail outside. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, That's so cute. But anyway, yeah, so um, I would say for the people who are interested in the Quirky Secret Santa gift exchange, stay tuned. Coming um, probably May, we'll start doing some um, notifications in the group. Um, what I said, Nicole has indicated that she's probably running the Secret Santa in July. So that will be great. And then come August, September, I will start putting some things in place again. And we'll do the one for the Christmas exchange. And yeah, 10 years. I'm curious where we're going. 11, That's 15, wonderful. 20. <laughs> but it doesn't matter when you sign up. Well, we, we open right? up the signing at a certain moment. So we'll post okay. that in the group when the signing okay. is open for which event. Otherwise, we can't keep track of what's happening. So uh, we'll make sure that everybody knows when the July one is open up for sign up and when the one for the, the Christmas will open up for sign up. Yeah. Right. Okay. You want to keep those things very clear. Otherwise, it, it sounds like pandemonium is it? Right. Trying to control the chaos. Yeah. 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 Control yeah. the chaos. We will we'll have rules. And after this, I absolutely can make some posts in the group because people probably will go over there just to clarify a few things. Uh, it's a lot of information, uh, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really cool. It's really nice. What I love about it is just Christmas Day and after, I look at the pictures in the group and all these quirkies and all these other fur friends and all the presents, and that's just cool to see. Yeah, yeah. very much so. That that's is horrible. Well, so we do encourage signups when the time is appropriate. Please stay tuned, but definitely follow Facebook. It's the Corgi Secret Santa Gift Exchange, and we encourage you to go and you know check it out noodle around in there see what's see what's available and uh when they have their signups do their signups it's five dollars per pet and it's all charitable funds so you're doing a wonderful thing for animals yes. and their paw rents. and you will and you will meet new friends mm -hmm. yes. yes you will meet new yes. friends and yes. we're corgi people we are social we like our friends that's right <laughs> <laughs> well, Josie, thank you so much for sharing about your program and uh, hopefully we can help you and encourage everyone to sign up and get those funds going and take care of some, some fur kids. Thank you very much for having me on and I will absolutely send you messages when what is happening. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Josie. Have a great rest of your night. You too. Take care. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. 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 Corgi Secret Santa Gift Exchange. That is fun. It is fun. I mean, how can you not love? I mean, it's a. It's, I love a secret Santa exchange anyway. And and when you're doing it with your pets, I think it's it's more fun because uh, they, you know, here here's some snacks. Yeah. Here's some snackles. What little corgi or other snackles? What other corgi or fur pet does not like snackles? Well, certainly corgis. Yes. <laughs> they love their schmackos. They do. <laughs> and it's a great way to meet other other. Corgi folks. Corgi folks. Um, pet parents. Pet parents. Yeah. The fur community. Yes. Yeah. Well, again, we encourage you to go to Facebook and it's in the groups. Corgi Secret Santa Gift Exchange. There will be posts on when the sign up happens. $5 per pet. Do great work. We encourage you to sign up. We certainly will. And thank you so much for joining us every Thursday here on Corgi Town USA. We're here for you. All things Corgi. <laughs> pet lifestyle. Borks included, no Borks extra included. charge. That's right. <laughs> so Candy Cat, Chuckles, Mortimer, Digby, Booger, Hammer, signing off. Signing off. Have Bye. a great night. Bye.